Hi guys, uh, I, for those of you who might be tuning in and don't know me, uh, I'm Rachel. I've been working for New Day on the staff team for about uh, four or five years now. I was trying to think back and I kind of forgot, but it's one of those two. Um, and uh, Mark, my husband, is the youth pastor here as well. Um, so before Aaron went on sabbatical, I had a list of the fruits of the spirit to choose from to talk about and uh, I chose faithfulness. Uh, first of all, the definition, what is faithfulness? Uh, the dictionary definition of faithfulness is remaining loyal and steadfast, basically not quitting. Uh, and I know there's a lot of different avenues we could go down when it comes to talking about faithfulness. We could talk about God's faithfulness to us, we could talk about us being faithful to each other. We could talk about spouses remaining faithful in marriage. But what I want to actually talk about today is us remaining faithful to God in our individual walks with him. Because uh, there are times in life where being faithful to God can feel kind of easy um, because we can see God working clearly in our lives. Um, or even there can even be times where Circumstances might be rough, but we feel God's presence. We feel him working still. So it's still kind of on the easier side to say yes to him and to be faithful because you can still see him despite the hardships. But what do you do when there is not much left to cling to in your faith with God? What do you do when you don't feel or see his help at all? Uh, when after ev you've done everything right, after even with continual pleading to him to help, there's just silence for days or weeks or years. How do you remain faithful then? Is it possible? Uh, so I'd like to share my own story about what I learned about faithfulness over the past maybe eight or so years and how my own faith was completely dismantled and then rebuilt from the ground up. Um, so some of you may have heard portions of this before, especially if you've been in youth group. I've shared my story a little bit, um, but I do kind of want to just lay it all out there. And um, my hope is, is that my vulnerability um, in this moment might help someone else that might be struggling with something similar. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go into my own story. Uh, so I've been a believer in Christ since I was very young, and even early on in my life, I was pretty dependent on God and felt like he was always there for me. I had a pretty rough home life, so um, he was there for me all the time, despite a lot of bad circumstances, and I had a pretty unshakable faith at that time in my life. Um, there were a lot of moments where I felt God with me, and um, going into adulthood, my thought was, you know, I could have the worst life in the world, and that's fine. But as long as I know God's with me, then I can go through anything. Uh, but what I didn't count on as I went into adulthood was that my own faith would be put into question itself. Um, so it was when I went into college in the adult world that things kind of started falling apart for me. And I had a lot of different pillars I was leaning on for my faith in God that all just kind of crumbled. So I kind of want to go over a couple of those like things that had been taken away from me at the time, um, just to give you a full other understanding of kind of that breakdown. Um, so the first thing to go when I graduated um, and went into Bible college was my trust in the Bible. Uh, so I went to a Bible school, ironically, uh, for a four years bachelor degree in youth ministry. And um, I was very confident that God wanted me there. Um, and I was excited to learn about him, and I was excited to be able to understand the Bible more. Uh, but as I spent all day, every day for four years, in and out of class after class, dedicated, so dedicated solely to studying the Bible and theology, um, suddenly it wasn't just learning more about God. It was more like, every verse, every belief, everything that I'd ever thought of or other people thought of was more torn down, evaluated, debated, picked apart, attempted to be put into these certain boxes. And depending on what professor you went to, one thing, you know, this viewpoint was right. And if you believed 
it, then you were a Christian. But if you believed this thing, then you weren't a Christian anymore. But then you had three different professors saying opposite standpoints. Uh, and so the environment was very um, not good for me, I guess, when it came to growing my trust in the Bible and my trust in who God was. Um, there was a big standard of perfection uh, in this Bible school as well, where, you know, if I didn't get the right teaching, if I didn't interpret the Bible correctly, I better, because if, you know, I'm going to be going into ministry, I'm going to be misleading however many people down the wrong path, and that's on you, and God's going to judge you. And so it's just like, you had to be perfect, and you had to make sure that you were doing things correctly. Um, so as you can imagine, that kind of just, the pressure just kind of made it worse and worse. And um, I can't even tell you how many like internal crises and meltdowns I had before, during, after class, because there was so much that I thought I knew that suddenly I didn't, and I didn't know how to get back there again. Um, so it got really bad. Um, suddenly really big portions of my faith that were, oh, were suddenly associated with uncertainty. And after graduating, it got so bad that I couldn't open my Bible without like panicking because I just didn't know if I was getting it right. I didn't know if I was reading it correctly. I didn't know if this was for me or was it for Israel. And there's just so many different facets of it. And so I was just really confused. So I just sort of stopped reading the Bible because it just, I, I couldn't depend on it anymore. So suddenly that was off the list of things I could trust um, within my faith. The, the second thing that was off the list was church. Um, around that time of me graduating college um, and finishing my degree, uh, Mark and I were getting married and we were both heavily involved in a church and their youth ministry. And most of our lives revolved around this church. I, we, I think all our spare time was dedicated to it. We were there like probably at least every day or every other day um, or with youth kids or whatever. Um, and I had considered that church my family and those youth kids were my kids as far as I was concerned. Um, you know, we, we really, really, we still love them, but, you know, like, we were very involved with them. Um, so kind of out of nowhere around this time of graduation, we had a really messy church split. Um, so suddenly all these people that I had looked up to, especially older members in the church, were suddenly screaming in each other's faces. Uh, I saw comprom people compromise their ability to follow God, and instead they followed money. I watched older women who I looked up to and saw as mentors suddenly just gossiping viciously about people behind their back and tearing them down. Um, and I watched a lot of my friends and um, fellow youth kids who had really also dedicated a lot of time to serving God and being in this church um, kind of just be crushed and thrown away by these leaders in the church. And most people walked away from their faith because of this. Um, and, and, you know, we didn't walk, Mark and I didn't walk away from our faith at this point, but, you know, we were also kind of in that category of just feeling like we were used and then cast out once our usefulness was gone and once we started kind of speaking up against things we didn't think were right. Um, so we, so I kind of, we left the situation kind of think, you know, I was thinking if I can't trust these people who have claimed to follow God for years, like, who can I trust? Like, how, how can I trust anyone within the church? Um, so I was kind of, at this point, I was kind of left to clinging to mere threads of my relationship with God. So because of all this, um, that was kind of when anxiety entered my life as well. And that was the third thing, the trust in my own ability to think and control my emotions, especially when it came to my relationship with God. Um, yeah, anxiety came. I had never dealt with it before. I had no idea how to, but suddenly it was taking over every thought. Um, I couldn't breathe a lot of times. I couldn't think straight. I started having panic attacks and sometimes just sitting there and freezing for hours and not moving, and I just couldn't snap out of it. Um, I felt really stupid and dramatic, but I just didn't know any tools to almost get myself out of my own head, so I was just frozen a lot. And I had no idea how to navigate it. Um, all my past coping mechanisms that 
used to come into play weren't working. Because I used to, you know, when I was upset, I used to read the Bible. I used to pray. I used to go, like, listen to worship music or talk to other Christians to help me. But it felt like all those doors had been slammed in my face and I couldn't trust those anymore. So I um, just had nothing, nowhere left to go. Um, and it only got worse over time. Um, I wanted God so bad. But at this point, it felt like he'd abandoned me. And it didn't feel like he was breaking through my anxiety. It didn't feel like he was providing any answers for me. And it didn't feel like he was even giving me new people, maybe, or like new Christians to help me through. It was, I just felt completely alone. Um, and I just, I, yeah, I, I really, I didn't even feel peace or joy or anything, no, much, no matter how much I begged him for it. And that left me feeling pretty abandoned. Um, so then around this time, this was all within like a four-year span. So it was just like bam, 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 like very all happening at once. So around this time, we moved here to Wisconsin. And shortly after, um, I started experiencing a lot of pain in my body, um, mostly in my joints, especially in my hands, my feet, my shoulders, knees, neck. Um, and it was so bad that uh, I couldn't even walk without a limp. Um, I couldn't wash dishes or do laundry. I had trouble putting my hair in a ponytail because my hands would hurt so bad. Um, and I had no idea what was happening. Like, I was very healthy up until this point. Um, and even outlets, like creative outlets that I had that had helped me emotionally in the past, I couldn't do. Like, I, drawing, I paid for it. If I drew for an hour, my hands would hurt for days after. Um, I couldn't even play video games. Like, even the movement of the controls with your thumbs, it just it hurt so bad. Um, so uh, I remember one time someone shook my hand and like it hurt because they just barely gripped it. So it was just, I, as the months went on, I went to multiple doctors and I finally got diagnosed with rheumatoid, rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune disease where essentially your immune system attacks all of your joints in your body and erodes them over time. So you get a lot of pain, you get a lot of fatigue um, and you get, it can trigger other problems down the road. So um, medication was possible to slow things down and take away the pain and give me something back that was mostly normal life. Um, but I knew nonetheless my life was changed. You know, I was on a different path now. I had to adapt and do things differently. And um, suddenly I was more frail. Suddenly there's more fatigue and less ability to function well. You know, suddenly I have all these doctor's appointments I have to go to and weird medication I have to do research on and all this stuff. And um, eventually I did get medication that got me back to a new normal for myself. But all of that took about a year um, to feel some up myself again. And I'm thankful for that. It's manageable now. But that whole year of pain was really bad timing in context with everything else that was going on. Um, so with all of this, I was at the lowest point in my entire life that I have ever been. I felt like everything was taken away from me, everything. Um, my ability to trust in the Bible, my prayers felt blocked out by anxiety. I felt like I couldn't go to other Christians or church. Um, suddenly my entire future looked bleak and even my own body felt like it had turned against me. Um, all these creative and emotional outlets that I used to have that helped me felt like it was taken away because of the RA, rheumatoid arthritis. And most of the time, I was either laying in bed or watching TV because that was about all I could manage, which does not help mental health either. So uh, I felt like in the beginning, when I first went on this path to going to Bible school, I felt like God had promised me this life full of purpose if I would just follow him. And I did. And I was willing at that point back then to do anything for him. Like, I think last week um, we were talking about, like, are you willing to, like, sacrifice your life, go to Africa? Like, I was in that point, like, I'll go to Africa. I'll do whatever you want, God. Um, so for me to feel like I was willing to do anything for him, and this was what I got, <laughs> this was my payment, um, I felt pretty um, bitter. I felt like um, he had stripped that, stripped a future from me. So what was I supposed to do now? For four years of this slow downfall, I'd been doing everything I could to cling to God. I'd been doing everything I could to try and keep my faith while everything fell apart around me. I tried to trust that he was good, but it felt impossible when I didn't see any evidence for so long. 
um, in my childhood and early adult years, I felt like God helped me by giving me emotions to kind of help balance out the bad circumstances like peace and joy. But I didn't get any of that this time around. And um, yeah, there was a lot of anxiety, doubt, anger. Um, and then whenever I did try to come to him, maybe mustering some sort of trust I had left for him, um, it felt fake because deep down I knew I didn't trust him at all anymore. So uh, with everything, uh, it, I guess to give a quick um, way of how it felt like a quick word picture, I guess, um, it sort of felt like I was holding on to the edge of a cliff to my faith by one hand. And it felt at that time, and I'm not saying this is what it was actually like, but at the time to me, it felt like I was hanging off the edge of this cliff trying to hold on, and God was up here just standing there looking at me, like waiting for me to fall. And when I wasn't, it felt like he was like prying my fingers off the edge. Like that's how much it felt like he was against me at that point. So how do you be faithful when you feel like that? <laughs> um, when others tell you to read your Bible or trust God or go back to church or find a new perspective, and you know you've tried everything, they've said and it's done nothing. So I... I think the worst part at the time, too, was me knowing a lot of the intellectual answers to my questions and my doubts. It was the problem wasn't that I didn't know the answers. The problem was that I didn't believe them anymore. So this around 2017 was when I was kind of brought to the reality of my situation and just kind of overcome by the hopelessness of it. Um, at this point, I felt like I was hanging on by one finger off the edge of this cliff. And um, so one night, uh, in kind of a last-ditch effort to ask God for help, um, I sat on the floor in the middle of the night in the silence, and I basically just talked to God. I stopped trying to muster this fake trust that I had for him. I just came to him absolutely raw, absolutely dead inside. I was done trying to be better than I was or pretending to be something I wasn't. And I was just super frank with him. I basically told him, I don't believe you're good. I think you're kind of sadistic. And I think that you're laughing at me as you're, you know, basically killing my soul. Um, I didn't even know. I told him I didn't know who he was anymore. And I basically said, I don't know how much longer I can hold on to this. So if you want me to stay or like stick around, you need to change something like now. And I don't care what you change, God. I don't care. Just change something. And then I just left it, not really expecting anything, just kind of being like, there you go, God. If you care, then do something. Um, and literally the next day while I was at work at Vino Latte, a regular customer named Aaron Winowiski um, was a little stressed out. And so when I talked to him, he said, well, uh, our staff, I need a new staff member for New Day. And that conversation got rolling and suddenly I was offered this job that I'm currently at now. And almost back then, I almost didn't take it, to be honest, because why should I work at a church? I mean, I literally have my one finger of faith left. That's not exactly inspiring or leader-like. Um, but I remember laying awake debating on if I should take it. And for the first time with that ounce of faith left. Um, I felt that tiny nudge from him to take it. And I didn't even know if it was him at the time, but I was like, maybe, okay. So I basically told God, I guess I'll try it. And if you want to do something with it, do it, I guess. Um, and all this, I was still super mad at him. And I wasn't even sure if he existed at this point. I like didn't even know if he was still good. But still somehow, even in that faithless place, choosing him somehow by a miracle of God, I would say. Um, and, uh, but as time went on, looking back, those kind of, mo those last moments of talking to God, that was my attempt at faithfulness. That was all I could do at that point, but that was faithfulness because I was still going to him. I wasn't avoiding him. Um, and so that's kind of how my faith journey has looked from here on out. Um, that last step of mine was actually the first step on a path that God himself put me on. The next step was actually taking the job, um, even though I felt like the worst person for it. Um, it kind of forced me to start facing all of these hurts that it had accumulated, and I was in a place where they could be brought back to light and start healing. 
Um, the next step was when Aaron and Heidi encouraged me to get counseling for my anxiety, and I realized I could actually control it instead of letting it control me, which is great, by the way. Um, and once I started being able to calm myself down, I started being able to see God in the little things again and seeing how he had been working the whole time. Um, and then that next step down that path was about a year later with this strong feeling that God wanted Mark and I back in youth ministry, which was a ministry that had just broken my heart before. And I never wanted to go back because it just had just felt like such a wound for me. But that's, that call from God was so insistent at that point that he just was asking me to be faithful to him still, even though I had about like 5% trust for him at this point, like there was hardly anything. But somehow I said yes, which granted the yes wasn't yes, God. It was fine, fine, I'll do it. Like it was very exasperated, but it was still yes. And that was about all I could do at that point. The thing slowly improved and I got better one day at a time, each day choosing somehow to still say yes, even though most of me wanted to give up for a very long time. So it felt as if the entire foundation of my faith had come apart and there was really not much left, but God was helping me to rebuild it, laying each block for it carefully and intentionally. Um, at this time, so during this like almost renovation process or this rebuilding, my faith wasn't just a random bunch of stuff I believed because a preacher told me to or I just or a book and I blindly accepted it. This time it was because each aspect of my faith was carefully examined, it was questioned, it was brought to God, and ultimately brought to the conclusion that, yes, I trust him with this one thing, and I put it into place, and then you move on to the next thing. Um, so that foundation feels a lot more solid to me. So where I'm at now, I don't know. <laughs> it's not perfect. Um, for a long time, it felt like every single day, it took everything in me not to just flee and run the other direction. But I do feel like over the years it has gotten better and maybe I'd say like 60% of my faith is rebuilt, which I'm pretty pumped about. I didn't think I'd get to this point. Um, I have a decent handle on my anxiety. Um, my RA is under control. I can do a lot of the things I love again, which I'm really grateful for. And as for my faith personally, I can read about a chapter of the Bible without freaking out. Before it was about a verse, so we're like slowly getting there. Um, and I do feel like I can trust other Christians in my life now. And honestly, that's thanks to a lot of you guys um, just giving me that safe space to have a lot of questions and push back on things that I wasn't sure about. So thank you. Um, talking with God can be good sometimes for me, but sometimes it's one of the most discouraging things ever. And I'm just being honest because it's not like recovery from this sort of thing is quick. It's not like it's instant. It's a journey and it can take a long time. And that's okay. Um, I don't have a lot of... Um, answers to questions, but that's okay too. I will get there, I'm sure. Um, so ultimately, this time of struggling to stay faithful taught me that my relationship with God is not dictated by my circumstances, nor is it dictated by how I feel. I can be faithful to God and still have trouble trusting him. I can still choose God and obey him while I'm having doubts and questions, and he'll actually help me work through them instead of being mad that I have them. I got to the point where I can know that he's working behind the scenes and I can trust that he's doing something even when I have absolute silence on my end. And I can come to him with all of it, even when I'm frustrated with him. I feel like this whole experience broke me out of this mindset that as a Christian, I have to act more perfect than I am. And it forced me to be honest with myself and with God and to show him the true rawness of myself. There's no more hiding or acting like I have it all together. And I'm still refusing to do this because we're all messes. So why are we pretending that we're otherwise? Um, and it's been really freeing um, being able to come to God himself exactly how I am and know that he will still help me move forward. Um, that's one of the things I've come to love most about him through this experience, actually, is that patience for my tiniest baby steps in the world. Um, so... The point of being faithful isn't that it just happens or it's not a natural reaction. Faithfulness is not blind and sometimes it doesn't feel happy and it doesn't feel trusting and it doesn't feel peaceful. I mean, is that the ideal? Yeah, sure. And sometimes it will be like that. But the reason why I share my story is because I know that there are other people out there like me and that either in the past or even right now, you've hit a low like this. 
and you you might even know someone that feels like this and it's hard to understand where they're coming from because you've never experienced like an absolute breakdown of faith like this um, and I hope that by sharing my story it'll give some perspective and maybe some patience to give people a space to sort through their questions and their doubts without judgment or kind of like a band-aid answer um, you know just something quick but usually the stuff isn't quick it's a process so you might even be listening to my story right now and be able to relate exactly to what I'm saying. Um, I've had so many conversations with friends and family over the course of this year and a half whose faith has been basically eradicated because of those, how those who claim to love Christ have acted. Um, and that's hard, that's hard. Um, maybe you feel like you're hanging off the edge of a cliff by one finger and you feel ashamed because you're supposed to believe God and you're supposed to not doubt and you're supposed to be joyful and happy and feel at peace, but you're not. Your soul's in agony. And you feel like somehow you have to get yourself right with God or at least muster a bit of trust or belief in him in order to come to him. But I'm just going to tell you now that is not the case. Faithfulness comes in many forms and faithfulness is God. Faithfulness to God is still possible even in the midst of your nothing. Choosing God is what faithfulness is. Choosing to keep going even when you have absolutely nothing left. You aren't a failure because you have nothing left. You're still choosing him, and that's literally all he needs to work with. My favorite verse ever coincides with this. It's um, 2 Corinthians 12, 19. Um, it's where Paul talks about a struggle, which he doesn't say what the struggle is, but it's just some really hard struggle for him that he keeps having to deal with, and he keeps begging God to take it away. And he basically says in his letter to the Corinthians um, that every time he begged God to take it away, God would say back to him, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. And then Paul continues saying, so now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. So our utter weakness and inability to understand where he, what he's doing is where God works best. All we have to do is tell him, I still choose you, and he'll absolutely take care of the rest in ways that you can't imagine. I feel like he used me in my weakness to give, a, give me a better relationship with him um, and a more real one than I've ever had in my life. I'm still not sure why things went down the way they did, but I don't think I'd change it if I could go back. Um, he's used every aspect of these struggles that I've talked about into something beautiful, and I know he will do that for anyone that asks him. Um, be honest with him. Tell him how you feel. Be raw. Lay it all out. People in the Bible did this all the time. Um, two quick examples. One was in 1 Kings 19. Uh, the prophet Elijah um, was basically having a showdown with this like evil king and queen. And he asked God to basically like, hey, can you win this showdown? And he totally did. God came through. God like was like fire out of the heavens type of winning. And after that whole display, Elijah basically went, I'm going to die. And he ran away. And then he asked God to kill him. Like he was so depressed after. <laughs> and God was totally like afterwards, I think God like gave him food and like let him rest for a little bit. And he's like, okay, go back out there. So like Elijah, who was this like amazing prophet of God and who even witnessed so much, had his doubts and his depression and God still worked with him. Um, another example is the King or King David, who wrote most of the Psalms. He was constantly being honest with God about his feelings, talking about his doubt, his fear, his anger at other people and at himself, his sorrow. And God always brought him out of it. Um, if you want to read like on your own time, some raw Psalms, um, Psalm 13, 22 and 31 are some really good ones. A lot of emotions. Um, so, in conclusion, faithfulness looks a lot of different ways, but you're not a failure to be faithful because of your struggles, your negative emotions, or your lack of belief or doubt. You still choosing him and still going to him despite all of this is faithfulness in itself, and he will honor it. So, don't give up. I feel extremely confident when I say that even if it takes 
some time to fully understand what he's doing, he will always use your faithfulness in some of the most beautiful ways. Um, so that's all I have for you. So let's just pray really fast. Um, Jesus, thank you so much for being faithful to us, even when we struggle with being faithful. Um, I just want to ask that you would help anyone that is struggling to stay faithful to you, that you would give them just enough to take that one first step towards you and um, please lead people down a path where their faith in you grows. Um, thank you so much for who you are, and I just pray that you would help us see it more and more. Amen. Thanks.